Okay, hello everyone. Um, my name is Andrea. I am with the with Transitions Edible Campus. Um, I might know some of you. I can't see anybody. Uh, this is very strange, <laughs> firstly. Um, so bear with us. This is our first time doing a virtual garden session. We hope to continue and do a couple more as we realize a lot of people are starting to garden from home. I'm really excited about this um, and it's our chance to kind of share ideas and practical experience that we've done over the years and share that with you guys and then also uh, vice versa. It's always everyone has um, different techniques and ideas so this is just an exciting way to to get together and do that. So um, Welcome to my house. I have to say, I put the bunny there to remind myself I've got a two year old who might burst in the room at any minute um, and she hasn't had her nap. So that will be interesting. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna go over um, how to sow seeds indoors. Um, I realize a lot of you have probably done this before, um, but I'm just gonna go over some simple um, basics. And this is how we sow our seeds. Um, again, there's different ways of doing this, so we'll, we'll hopefully discuss different uh, techniques for seed sowing. Um, so we're going to do indoor seed sowing, and this is for inside your house um, on a windowsill is how I imagine they're going to start. Um, if you've got a greenhouse, amazing, a or a polytunnel, that's even better. You can um, start sowing seeds in there as well. Um, if you don't have any of those things, you can always try putting up a um, a mini cloche tunnel or poly tunnel, and you could sow more in there. So the reason why we're sowing indoors um, is <laughs> hi Helena. Thank you. I can see your face now. Um, the reason why we sow indoors, um, there's a few reasons, and it's basically just to get a head start with some of our crops because we know. Um, outside this time of year in Scotland it's very unpredictable and the temperatures are still a bit low in the soil so it's the soil we're waiting till that warms up and then the risk of <laughs> hi Bob um, that the risk hi, hi. goes away um, so we sow indoors um, to get an early start um, also there are kind of more tender crops like tomatoes or cucumbers um, and those you can have hardy um, crops that you can kind of keep indoors. Um, and if you're lucky enough to have a south facing window, you can probably experiment with more types of crops so we can keep them indoors throughout the season. A lot of um, seeds, I guess, are more risky to put outside. Maybe they're more expensive, um, like courgette seeds or things that you just want to monitor. Um, keep a close eye on until they're um, put outside where it can be riskier to, to germinate. Um, we also do this because obviously it's lots of fun. Um, there's just something so special about sowing a seed and just watching it grow. So it's just a great activity to do and experiment, especially if you have young ones that really kind of enjoy seeing this um, develop. So those are some of the reasons why we, we sow indoors. Um, and also, if you have um, a vegetable garden outside, it might be that it's not quite ready. So this just buys you a bit of time until your garden is ready, or if there's a crop that's already about to mature, you can um, have its successor crop indoors and looked after um, until it's ready to go outside. So. Okay. Um, now they don't need to be very deep they're really small seeds so after that um, you can just dust a little bit on top you can either sprinkle just what you've got or um, you could also sprinkle this is from Isabel's sand tray and that just takes the clumps away That's quite messy actually <laughs> Um, this is another thing you could use. This is um, from um, garlic and it just dusts the seeds on top. We also, um, you could also, if you haven't watered at this stage, you could take the whole tray once it's finished and you could um, sit it in a bath of water 
and it will just get soaked from the bottom up. So that's another way to sew your seeds. Okay, so it's just lightly on top. And that's it. Okay, so it should, shouldn't take too long to germinate. Um, at this stage, they don't actually um, need a lot of light. They could sit in a cupboard with your boiler, for example, as long as it's warm. And then as soon as they germinate, that's when they need the light. And it's just, and then you just keep it moist until they germinate. And then that, and that stage, that's when you prick them out. Um, and kind of that's the harder part where you have to look after them until they get transplanted and then until they go out of doors. So that's how we do it. So that's for things um, like your brassicas. So I would put um, kale in here, leeks in here, um, things not to sow directly in containers are your root crops. So carrots, beetroots, parsnips, they don't transplant well. So those are the types of crops that you put directly in your soil outside um, and then also if it's the beans or peas they're really quick growing and their roots grow really fast so those types of plants i put in um, modules like that um, or and helena will talk about this more is you you can put them in some of the recycled containers so this is a pea mod too and for this, I just put one in each. Can you put the camera on? That? Yeah, one in each. We've already done pre-done holes. One in each, and then just cover them up and give them a water. Again, if your seeds are old, or you know, a couple years old, and you're not sure, then that's when I start to put maybe two in a module, just in case. Um, and then you give them a water, and that's that. Okay, so that's the end of my demonstration. Um, I'm sure there's a lot I forgot. So if there's any questions, let me know. Um, but I think what we'll do then is go on to Helena. <sighs> okay. <laughs> right. Um, if you want to keep your camera up, then I'll just pretend I'm talking to you. Okay, that works. <laughs> <laughs> works for me. Um, so I'm, I don't have a big screen. Do you have to click on me to see me? Yeah, there we go. Hello. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, if you were all sort of planning this all ahead, you might have. Oh, sorry. Let me start again. Hi, I'm Helena. I work for Nine Wells Community Garden. Um, and I'm hoping that we can just share some of the joy of growing vegetables. So if you were all organized, you might have brought bought pots in advance. So this is a nice regular pot that you buy with a wee, wee container underneath to catch any water. The main important thing about your pots is that they have these drainage holes. A lot of people forget that um, plants actually need to have a fair bit of air in, the, in with their roots or else they can rot easily. And they also won't grow very well unless they've got um, the right combination of air and water and soil um, in in with their roots so um so if you don't have a pot you can improvise with lots of different things you might have around the house this was from i think a hummus container but um i've just made it a hole in the bottom with a, a um pair of scissors just be very careful when you're making the hole that you go down so that you don't go into your hand don't try and make holes like that Okay, and um, these ones are particularly handy because they come with their own saucer and you can put them underneath. Now, I'm a trained professional, <laughs> as well we know, um, and I've grown this in a pot which doesn't have any drainage holes, but I've had to be really careful that I'm not seeing any water pooling at the base um, underneath the pots. So that's, that's my key takeaway is if you're going to use other things, there's so many options. Fruit punnets are a good one as well. 
And we can even um, again combine a couple of things. So you've got your fruit punnet and you've got your thing without holes so that you can make a pot and a base together. Um, these are handy little um, just rolled up newspaper pots that I've made using high tech pesto jar and just make those and they're really good for things like beans that you want to um, plant about halfway down and then you can plant the whole thing in the ground you don't have to wait um, or don't have to take anything out the, the seeds will just grow through the um, newspaper so that's that's fine um, general rule about seeds is the bigger they are the deeper you want to sow them so this is a big runner bean seed that one can go that can go quite deep under under the ground because it's got a lot of reserves something like this aura the leaves are the seeds are a lot smaller and you wouldn't want to bury those ones so deep so it's just a bit of thinking about how much um storage that the, the different seeds have got and how deep you can plant them if you've got packets of seeds read the back of the packet that'll tell you um just exactly what sort of size which of uh, depth you want to be planting them at okay i'm just going to quickly show you how i made these little round pots newspaper pots you can buy a thing called a paper potter but a jar works just as well you just want to make sure that your newspaper is ripped to about the same length as, as the thing that you're wrapping it around. But you only want about two thirds of it actually on, in this case, the jar. So I'm going to roll the newspaper around the jar. It needs to be tight enough to stay together, but not so tight that I can't get the jar out afterwards. And then simply push down into the open jar Oops, and use a little bit of force just to, to make sure it stays. And then you should be able to bring the pot out. Uh, and you've got another little pot that you can use. Now, oops, I'll try and show you. It doesn't matter. Oh, can you see that? It doesn't matter that there's a little hole in the bottom because as the soil goes in, it'll close that hole up and that will be fine. And again, I would still put that in something which has got holes so that when you water it, it's not sitting in um, too much water for too long. I would always say water from the base if you possibly can. Um, there are other more complicated pots that you can make with newspaper again. So this one, this one looks very fancy. I don't know if you can see that or if it's too bright, but it's a, a square pot. And what we'll do is I'll add the links um, into the um, discussion underneath the Facebook event so that you can find out how to make that. But it's it's a quite a, it's a bit of an origami number. So you have to open it open it out but like I said I'm not going to attempt to teach you it from here I can I can just give you a link to where I found it from okay um yeah uh oh yep other things obviously uh, because we've all been hoarding our toilet paper uh there should be plenty of toilet paper tubes and you can make these similarly use them the same as these paper pots um Andrea did a lovely video about how you just cut the base on a slight diagonal and then fold it in and then you've got a, a base to your pot as well and um, if you're looking this is one that was made last year so it's been out in the garden for a year and it's, it's a tin can that's gone all moldy but again not moldy rusty and um, you need a hammer and nails and you can drill uh, hammer in some drainage and that did a perfectly good job of growing me some flowers last year um, one thing I was going to say is if you are going to put your plants directly out and from your windowsill straight on into the ground and you don't have a chance to harden them off, you can make little um, like a mini greenhouse that you can just place on top. It's even better if you've got a lid. But um, And once you finish with that, you can turn it upside down and use it as a, 
a watering thing to get the water to the base of the plants. Uh, let me see. Oh, labels. Labels as well. It's oops. Got to bring them. It's really important to label all the plants that you're growing because if you're anything like me, you'll forget within about 20 minutes what it was you actually planted in that particular pot. So you, again, you can just use I didn't bring it with me. You can just use any bit of plastic. Um, a yogurt pot is great. You just cut it down around the top of the yogurt pot um, and use that as a label. Um, pop it in. I've used slate here and a pen and a and a pen as well. Um, that also works. Just be aware that pencils actually work better than sharpies. Sharpies tend to fade in the sun, but if it's just for a short term thing, you can use a sharpie um, and write even on a bit of wood, um, a lollipop stick. Um, you can. Oh, you can just about use anything you can write on as a label. Um, OK. Um, sometimes it's better just to wait a bit and plant everything outside. It, it just depends on what conditions you've got indoors and what you can do um, outdoors. Other things need to be grown indoors, like Andrea said. Um, I'm thinking if I've got anything else that I can add. I think that might be me for now. Um, I've probably forgotten other stuff as well, but give me a shout. The um, cream ones are good because you could still use the lid. I think you probably did mention putting the lid underneath. Yeah. But as a little extra greenhouse, someone was asking about putting um, plastic on top just to speed up the germination. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it increase, increases the temperature. But you just have to remember that they do need air, so yeah. either put holes in it or open it up once in a while. But the lids are really good for that. You can also use these fruit punnets as lids. If you've got another one, you can use that as a a little mini greenhouse as well. Yeah, they work really well for um, for that. We use a lot of um, mush, you know, the mushroom containers. You can get the clear ones and you can get the see-through ones. And we, uh, sorry, the clear ones and the not not see-through ones. And we use the the mushroom containers as the base, and then the clear ones as a as a wee roof to make a little um, greenhouse. Okay. Let's see what does it say. Okay. Can I ask what you put in your egg curtains? You know, I've seen people do this. I've never grown using an egg curtain, but I've seen this on, on one of the, um, you know, what you can use instead. And I just thought we could that could be used just the same way, but it would need to have quite a small seed and you'd need to really stay on top of watering because as soon as you've got these things with the um, cardboard, there will be losing water, uh, air. So yes, yeah, sorry, water out the sides as well. So you just got to make sure that they don't dry out. But anything like your salad, um, you could even start um, chard or something like that in here. So anything that's you're going to be moving on probably quite quickly. But that would be a good way if you were short on um, on pots just to increase your growing space a little bit. Okay. Safety for planting tender. Yeah. So yeah, you 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 self uh, self servicing then. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. I just wondered whether you needed me to. So no, yeah, Mark. I'm... Mark had a couple of questions. Okay. And one of one was about using um, plastic covers on top of pots, and I think we addressed this one. Yeah. Mark, is that is that right? Um, it's. Do you have any follow-up questions from that? You can unmute yourself to speak if you'd like. Uh, yeah, I've, I've used um, a single roll of cling film that I probably bought about 10 years ago and stopped using for food completely for covering seed trays and sometimes pots before the, the seedlings germinate. Once they germinate, then I, I think it, it, has, it has to be removed. But I tried it for some things last year, and most of them didn't germinate. 
Um, it could be that I was using bad seed, um, but I just wondered if, if you know, it, I might have been leaving the, the uh, possibly not ventilating enough because I probably didn't remove it at night or, or didn't remove it in the daytime. Um, yeah, I think that um, I like a bit more air. I mean, if, if you've sewn it quite sort of like low below the lid, I think mm. it's quite nice to have a bit more air getting to the seeds. Um, mm -hmm. One thing you can do to increase germination rates is actually soak the seeds overnight if they're big enough to handle that way. Mm -hmm. um, so even kale or something you could soak overnight before um, putting them on the soil and that might increase your germination rate. I do I do think these, these fruit punnets as a little greenhouse is actually probably going to be more effective. I've never tried cling film. Um, uh -huh. but I, yeah, I, I can see it's exactly the same principle and they've got built-in ventilation holes. Yeah. So. That would be a, a big advantage. Yeah. And again, they won't sit very evenly on it as well. So you'll get some more air transfer. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. if, even if I was using uh, cling film, I'd probably uh, spike some holes in the top. Uh-huh. Just, just to ensure you did yeah. get some air. OK, thanks. Right, Mark, you also had a follow up, um, a different question there. Um, do you want to ask it yourself or? OK, yeah. Um, when I first started growing vegetables a long time ago, I was told never to plant out any tender things before the end of May. But we've had a lot of climate change since then. Um, and even though I was further south at that time, I'm wondering if, if you've got a, um, a kind of approximate date for the, the safest, or not the safest, the, the earliest safe time to plant out tender crops in Northeast Fife. Um, I would be thinking about keeping an eye on the weather and covering them uh, for the first, say, week or so, or a couple of weeks after they've gone out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm usually running behind trying to get things in. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, managing to get things out for the earliest date isn't, isn't usually my, my problem. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, if you've got something, anything really, a uh, polythene, uh, something that you can, like a hoop that you can make, just yeah. to, to stop any ground frost from affecting your plants, then, mm -hmm. then that would be great fleece, um, even bu bubble wrap. Mm -hmm. And if you had a superbly well-organized year and you really could choose the date to put them out, I mean, obviously one year is not the same as the next, but just on average, when uh, would you be putting them out? Yeah, you mean sowing? Seeds or stuff no, no, that's no, brought on no, indoors. No, things that have been raised indoors right. uh, in containers. Things like courgettes, yeah. uh, pumpkins, squash, that kind of thing. Um, and then planting them outside for growing on. I always go with, sometimes I do end of April um, mm -hmm. if I'm feeling hopeful and the weather <laughs> is too. But May is a safe, I think May is a safe bet. Um, it's because it takes a lot of work to get to that point, so if you don't want to risk it by just putting it outside if you can keep them indoors for a bit longer, or at the very least, put them outside but cover them up with uh, even fleece. The fleece will give it an extra five degree um, raise in temperature and also protects it. Mainly, the wind is also a huge problem um, right away if they're not hardened off, but. May, I would say May, but again, you're right, like climate change, it, it, it changes all the time. So it's just a case of checking your your weather. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Bob might Andrea, have something to I've say a, to that. I've got a wee follow up on that one, Andrea. Okay. Hi there. Yeah, it's Bob. Um, Bob, I'm a volunteer at the Botanic Gardens. I've got on the Wednesday gardening group, and I set up the uh, community garden in Strathkin is about 10 years ago. Um, I, I think that's a really good question, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> okay. You just kind of raised there. Yeah. C can, you, can you hear me okay, Mark? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. You that's might good. even yeah. be able to see me I, now. I, I think you have to be really careful on um, planting out times on crop, on seedlings that you've raised, say, in a cold frame or indoors on a mm -hmm. windowsill or um we we really had a problem only two years ago with a lot of people in our village planted out runner beans 
right at the end of May, and there uh, was quite a bad frost. Oh. And you, you, you don't always need a frost either. If you get um, a couple of degrees, goes down to two degrees, that can be enough mm -hmm. to clobber a lot of these things. So really, uh, I'd say in northeast Fife, you, you're really talking about um, uh, beginning of June before you really want to put these things yeah. out. Uh, unless, like uh, Eleanor and Andrea said, you've got some sort of... Uh, fleece protection or cotton mm -hmm. protection or, or but it, it, i think the seed sowing thing is really important and just following up from what andrea her talk earlier um it is worth growing a lot of these things like the peas and the beans i i, I planted broad beans sweet peas and and ordinary peas um certainly sort of end of february beginning of march mm -hmm. you know cold green unheated greenhouse mm. and they're, they're nearly ready to go out now yeah. um and you can you can plant that sort of thing out um in april um and then tomatoes and peppers yeah raise those um they they could have been in you know a couple of weeks ago um mm. bit careful with courgettes and marrows not, not doing those too early um i think one of the important thing on peas and beans to raise them in 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 pots broad beans and the peas is if if you go straight in the ground certainly my experience is the mice love them mm -hmm. okay so um, yeah. you can you can sow a whole vial of peas and um and you you can lose a lot overnight <laughs> if you if you've got any mice in your garden um what one good there's an old Sorry? Um, sorry, if I can just come in on, on that one. I, I don't know if, if you have anything, but I I heard a long time ago an old gardener's tip is to put seeds in paraffin before you sow them. Yeah, yeah, I, I heard it. I've never tried it. It, it. it sounds a bit extreme, but I don't know. Yeah, I never um, have any paraffin, so I haven't really no, tried it. No. But I would give it um, a try if I did have some paraffin. I, Right. Um, um, I've got a question from Amanda, uh, and yeah. I don't know who would like to answer that one. It's from the chat. And she's asking, that. hardening off means moved outside into, into a polytunnel or greenhouse? What Hard does hardening off mean? Okay, hardening off just means getting the plants used to being outside. So you might harden a plant off by initially just taking it outside during a fine, fine day and then bringing it back in at night for maybe a week or so, and then checking the weather and seeing if it's actually not going to get too cold overnight and then maybe leaving it out overnight. You might end up not putting it out every single day if the weather forecast is either very windy or very cold. Um, so you might actually just be leaving it inside one of those day, one of the days while you're getting, getting the plants used to being outside. It's just adjusting them from this lovely lovely indoor condition where they're totally cosseted, there's no wind, the light levels are really much lower, even if it's a bright sunny windowsill, um, it'll be much, much higher outside and that's quite a stressful thing for the plant as well. So it's just, just getting it used, used to being outside um, in a sort of as gentle a way as possible. Thanks, Helena. Um, th I think Peter, Peter's got, um... Peter, um, would you like to come in? You, you seem to have a tip about uh, uh, windowsill growing. Would you like to come in now? You just Hi. need to, yeah, there you go. If you've only got a windowsill, the only thing that could happen to your seedlings is they become leggy. Uh, can you really introduce will... yourself, Peter, so well, that people sorry, know who I, you are? <laughs> Peter Christopher, I'm the community gardener at the uh, Tayport Community Garden. Um, yeah, back to windowsills. If you find that sometimes the seedlings get a bit leggy, they get really long, it's quite difficult to deal with them thereafter and they can perhaps fall over, especially. So one thing you can do is cut a box to the width of the windowsill on the three sides and then line it with uh, baking foil. And that means that the light isn't coming only from one direction as the light seems to bounce off the back of the box and keeps the... It keeps them smaller, sturdier, and stops them reaching for the light. Hope that's of some use. Do you have an example that you're using at the moment, Peter, that you can show people? 
No, I don't grow on windowsills. Okay, yeah, you do, you're do. you quite well equipped at home, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Darn also, the gardeners. <laughs> it's also worth, I don't think we mentioned this, but when you are, and this happens all the time, in fact, my partner did this the other day, but I didn't mention it to him, I should have. Um, if you're planting something um, to prevent it going leggy, like you really do need to fill up the pot all the way to the top. If you fill it up, if you don't fill it all the way to the top, um, that's another reason that they become really leggy. And then if, you, uh, and additionally, if you're at a windowsill, it just, it doesn't um, give them a good start. So fill, make sure you fill your pot all the way to the top and tap it down. I like your idea, Peter, about the, the um, tin foil. Uh, we've got another question. Uh, this is from Sonia. Um, would you be able? To, would you like to um, unmute yourself and ask it, or should I? I'll ask it then. So, um, unprecedented times. Uh, we have done a lot of gardening in Belgium, but just moved to Scotland. We do not have soil or seeds, and the shops are closed. How do we start up from scratch? Any suggestions? Andrea, do you want to? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I'd ask where where you are because if well, in St Andrews, I was there last week, and the lawnmower place um, were selling compost. So She's I in Lucas. So Lucas. So it's not too far. I don't know if you can drive or actually they did deliver. I ordered about ten bags, and they delivered for us. So that was kind of our potting compost. Um, yeah, online. Yeah, I'm hearing online that there's a lot of demand. So it's just a case of finding something. Little um, has seeds. I saw those yesterday. Um, so, um, just for everybody, there's some people sharing um, in the chat so you can keep track of what's being said if you open the chat window. But um, there's seeds from Mr. Fothergills. Is that is that how we pronounce it? Fothergills, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, Franchi and Garden Centres near near me, which is, Amanda, where are you? Oh, she's in Essex. So I think most of us are in Scotland. So <laughs> there's some garden centres that might uh, do collections or deliver uh, as well. I think one of the first things I you want to go out does and do anybody today else is... Have any? Sorry. I, I, I've got a... I think LBS might be delivering. LBS, okay. Then some supermarkets might, uh, still have seeds. And compost. Little had compost as well. It's not great, but it's something. Things uh, uh, has got. Yes, Bob? Hi. Yes, Bob, I, go I've ahead. Got a little follow up from Andrea about the place in St Andrews, uh, the mows and tools. Um, I was in there just yesterday and they've got some seeds they're running out but they're hoping to get some more in and i think the reason they're open is they actually sell bottled gas so that's the reason they can stop open mm. but they've got they've got a big yard full of compost grow bags and all they've even got sort of a, a lot of uh, peatless uh, compost you'll be pleased to hear so uh, mowers and tools just along the Largo Road there is worth a visit. Is there uh, any... Helena, would you like, because you popped up in the chat, would you like to talk about the peat-free compost yeah, and why it's, it's important to use that? Yeah, I would just briefly like to say that we should hopefully all be buying peat-free compost because um, by using the compost which has peat in it, we're destroying the peat, um, well, the biodiversity, but also its ability to draw down carbon and help us fight carbon, carbon um, climate change. Uh, so it's really important that we show the people that are selling these things that we don't want to buy peat. And if it doesn't say peat free on it, it's almost, well, it will have peat in it and it might be up to 70% peat. Um, and then the new, I've, I've been using peat free for years and, and they're, they all seem to be reasonably good um, composts. And if you're worried, you can always add um, like seaweed fertilizer or things um, to the compost once your plants are growing a bit. Uh, yeah, do, you, do you have any tips of which one um, worked for you best so far? Uh, 
Um, I've used, I think it's Miracle Grow and New Horizons. Um, New Horizons, I've just started a new bag of, um, and I don't know how that's going to go. So. so Mark's got a question about alternatives to peat. Uh, he, he makes a point that core, you know, mm -hmm. the coconut fibre, is imported from very far away. What do you have to say to that? Well, it's a waste product otherwise, and it's not, uh, it's, it, it'll be, it won't be um, moved fast, so it shouldn't have too high of a carbon footprint as far as its transport goes. Um, I actually <laughs> can I just say that you know um, it's actually stunning how much more peatlands absorb in terms of and hold in terms of carbon compared to forests. Everybody is talking about planting trees um, as a really effective way of capturing carbon. Peat and marshes have probably about ten times greater capacity to capture carbon. So um, it's it's so important we preserve them. Um, it's 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 a massive problem if if we get rid of them. Yeah, that's me. That's my little. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, and also obviously compost yourselves and get make compost if you haven't started. Now's a good time to start. Start today. Yeah. There's an idea here. So just digging holes and doing in situ composting that is a fun one. Um, and there's also other ideas like um, making feeds. Um, doing hot composting versus cold composting. It's a whole nother topic that I thought maybe we could do yeah, another yeah. one of these on composting, but- And um, wormeries maybe. And wormeries, yeah. As fun as seed sowing is, I think composting is probably the most essential thing that you start today. Yeah. So, uh, request about composting. Um, I think it's probably better to do a workshop um okay on it um, i mean we can we can include some links can we okay we've got re requests for composting chat so <laughs> we'll sort something out for that uh, yeah I'm, I'm up for that i'm up for compost chat <laughs> um does anybody else have any questions you can um type them in the chat or you can raise your hand and i'll call on you Georgiana's got her hand up. I think Georgiana's had her hand up from the beginning. Georgiana, would you like, like to ask a question or is it just sort of, you can put your hand down by clicking on the little hand icon if you- Thank you, no, I'm just listening and taking all in. Thank you. Okay, okay. <laughs> if there's any questions in future, please, like I could, we could give you our emails or on Facebook and just ask away. <laughs> okay um question um rosie's got small kids uh so any suggestions for protecting seeds and plants from cats and children on a windowsill <laughs> very topical <laughs> i can i can do the children one i don't think i can do the cat one um i always got my kids involved so that they felt like they were you know like they were part of it so it was really you know um, I don't know how small your children are, but if they can understand enough to start planting, then um, and maybe maybe if they're involved in doing it and you really reinforce the, yeah, mine too. <laughs> um, my, it just says that they are fiddlers. Um, it, yeah, yeah. So basically, get them involved and get them to check. So they they're allowed to check them every. Um, every day or every like couple of hours if you want um and maybe record it somewhere yeah yeah i don't know how i don't know if i can help but beyond that yeah cats are difficult aren't they <laughs> there's another question from vicky she's asking she's just dug over a new veg patch and she's asking is it worth adding grass clippings to it and if so when I would always say compost them and then add the compost. Anybody else with um, tips about that? No, Peter or Bob? Bob, yeah. Um, I, 
grass cuttings you can use as a sort of a mulch once the things are growing around your fruit or your veg, but in a thin layer, but I'd probably tend to put it on a compost heap in layers. And make sure they don't have seeds because otherwise you will have uh, a lot of grass or between the veg. Yes. Yes. Very good point there. <laughs> any more? Uh, we've got another five minutes if there's any questions in theory. Can I plant in the raised beds already the um, like rocket and uh, salad seeds? Yep. Yeah, uh, salad might need some protection still, but rocket is hardy. Okay. Okay. So Sonia, we'll... Sonia's got another one, um, and she says um, that tea bags and eggshells do not com decompose very well. Um, I guess that's some composting thing. Yeah, that's because the tea bags probably have plastic in them. Um, so most tea bags have a very thin layer of plastic to make them seal around the edges. Um, so I've I've stopped putting tea bags in my compost heap for that reason and eggshells if you save them up you can use them and sprinkle them around plants that you think will be um, likely to be eaten by slugs just makes a doesn't little... work doesn't work oh well it adds calcium anyway <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't worry too much if the eggshells haven't decomposed I usually just leave them in anyway Has anyone got any good slug tips? Anti-slug tips. Slug pub. Slug. Oh yes, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> A beer, sunken beer container, isn't it? Yeah. For anyone who hasn't tried it, what you do is you get one of these shallow uh, hummus pots or whatever, and you sink it into the ground to soil level. And then you buy some really, really cheap gut rot from the supermarket, not good stuff, uh, probably lager, and you just pour it in and about a couple of days later, it's disgusting, but you find it full of decomposing slugs. And um, you have an e evil chuckle as you throw it <laughs> away. We have um, another question from Jenna, who's asking, where is good area to plant carrots, potatoes, onion in the garden? Should they be covered fr from seeds? Um, I would say sunny area for your carrots. You can interplant carrots and onions. That's supposed, supposed to reduce the carrot root fly. Um, I'm not convinced. Um, and potatoes are pretty hardy. They'll they'll cope with anything. And they do tend to suppress weeds as well. So if you have fairly weedy area, I guess it, is that is that right? Um, they do have lots of leaves. It'll still get weedy underneath, but um, it maybe won't be such a big big of a deal. Um, I'm not sure what the question means. Should they be covered from seeds? Jenna, would you like to clarify? You can you can turn your microphone on or your camera on as well if you want to ask it. All <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> baby in the background. Uh, why don't you type it in then? <laughs> Do you just mean not sure about the covered from seeds? What 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 does that mean? You, yeah, you can start them either straight in the ground. Yeah, straight in the ground is probably best um, for carrots and onions. You can move onions. <laughs> um, you, it's. You can technically move carrots, but you're more likely to have forked carrots if they, the roots have been um, disturbed when they're being transplanted. 
carrots um, go well in, they like a sandy soil. And I find that a lot of our plots don't have the right soil conditions. So um, you could put them in like troughs or containers. Potatoes you can also put in containers, um, I guess, as well as onions, if you're really short on space. But carrots, um, yeah, they're a bit fussy. So I would sow them directly in the ground and not transplant them. Okay, um, I think we can only answer one more question because we're basically at the end of the um, hour. Um, and I think a lot of the stuff is maybe about planting outside and um, intercropping and that kind of stuff. And maybe we'll do uh, another session on that because it's it's a large topic. Um, maybe I'll, I'll just take Amanda's question because she's asked it first. Uh, she's asking about the pyramids uh, that you see with beans, so that you know the cane, little cane supports. Do do they have one plant usually, or do you plant more plants on those? I'd plant up to three. Yeah. Okay. That's a nice and simple question answer. <laughs> well, I think we uh, we should probably wrap up because it's an hour's up. Um, Can we see everyone? Bye. 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 <laughs>